Hello my friends and welcome back to not a new faction preview video but rather what I will call an addendum or a part 2 to the R Arden 9 video that was posted just a few days ago because honestly I missed out on perhaps what makes the Arden 9 the I wouldn't say most unique faction but a very unique faction in the fact of their conscription which I didn't really talk about, and nor did I show off some of the unit visuals, such as the Gondorian units, who actually adopt the color schemes of the Ardenium. So, for this video, I'm going to first of all cover the campaign map with the conscription camps, um, which units come from which nations, along with which settlements allow you to recruit your royal knights, and then I will go on to the battle map, where in addition to the conscription units, I also forgot input the Baruthiel's ranger unit uh honestly i don't know how i forgot them my guess is that when i was checking through all the units the cards looked quite similar so i didn't notice that i was missing the crossbowmen and while recording the video and doing it on the campaign map i was i just didn't think about it so for that i do apologize so we'll start off in the southlands looking at the conscription camp so as you can see on the map if you look closely i have taken all of the capital regions of every nation in the game. I don't think I missed anyone. I should have everyone right now. Just so that we can check and see where unique units come from and where you will not get your Royal Knights and where you will not get your Conscription Camps. For the most part, it follows a general rule of thumb that your Conscription Camp units, first of all, only come from settlements that are predominantly human-focused. So, any like Gondor, Rohan, Dorinian, even though they have the Elves, they count for this. But regions such as Erebor in the Iron Hills, uh, Khazad Doom in the mountain ranges here, uh, if you go to the Blue Mountains, and pretty much every elven capital, you will not get any conscription units, and neither in these regions will you get your royal knights. However, you do get them in Imladris, which is something of note, and I'll go through all of those settlements that you can get your royal knights from right after we go through the conscription. So starting off in the Southlands, Umbar is the same as Harad in terms of which units you get. So at the Tier 1 Conscription Camp, which does give you a very nice economic boost, but it does have a serious Law and Happiness debuff, you have Haradrim, Haradrim Archers, Southrond Lancers, and Southrond Pikemen. Now a general trend that you will probably observe as we go through each of the human settlements is that there is always a Cavalry unit. In some form, there's always a cavalry unit in your conscription camp, so you always have that option. Since you don't normally get cavalry, but you will get the cavalry of a nation that you inhabit, so long as it is a nation of men. And typically, the units will also, not always, but they try to fill out where you might have gaps in your roster. So you don't have like an early game pikeman unit as the Arda Naim. Instead, you need to get the R Ferrazon Faithful, but you can get Southron pikeman if you start in Harad along with Haradrim Archers, which are, eh, you know, just Razadon Archers, but less, you know, lower armor, so I don't know why you'd recruit those unless you just wanted a cheap extra unit, but, you know, at a significant defense debuff. Anyway, once you upgrade the building here in Harad, you get the Barracks of True Sons, which removes the public order penalties, but also removes the economic penalties. So if you do this, you do gain two free upkeep, which is nice. And you gain an additional unit. So from Harad, you get the Hashari Blades to give you a kind of an, a battlefield assassin unit, as they are called in Medieval 2. A hide anywhere, high attack unit. Now, I'm not going to go in depth on the conscription units until I get to their respective videos, but I will give a kind of brief overview on what you can get and how they kind of fill out the roster. So you will get that. Um, those four units pretty much anywhere in Harad. It's the same in Finabel here. I'm actually on an earlier version of version 5 um, of the actual 4 release, but not before the double entries were fixed. So in some cases, there will be double entries. That has already been fixed. I took Finabel, and it shows it there. Moving on eastwards to the lands of Kond in Sorlutsa Kond, the Tier 1 Conscription Camp will give you Marauders, Step Tribesmen, and Baroon Raiders. And in Khan, you actually do get two units of cavalry to start with, and then the Step Tribesmen to act as a Javelin Spear unit. So something else you don't really have outside of the Elite Javelins is a cheap Javelin. So you do get that from the Variags of Khan. 
and then going to the barracks of true sons you do add the very ag horse archer so you can get a very very solid horse archer unit and a lot of cavalry actually if you go to cond and i believe i'm actually going to be fairly certain when i say this that you get the most amount of cavalry as the ardenine if you decide to go all the way to cond do note that you are kind of you know in the backwater of the world there's not a whole lot going on in this region so i i mean i wouldn't recommend a condish start but hey it's there if you want to do it i'm not certain on how far it extends into Kandish territory, but I'm sure if you go to like Shelkar and Rune, there's a potential that you might get Kandish units here. If not Amrun, then there's a castle roughly in the middle of my screen here called Kruk Mahur, and that one may include Kandish units, but don't quote me on that. If I was playing the Ardenine, I don't think I would ever go to Khan just for that. I would go to pretty much anywhere else but this region of the world. So next I will move on to we'll go to Rune. So over here at Mistran, since you go to the Rune, and this is actually a great place to start a campaign as you do have the bonus of getting your Ezra Zaire units around the Sea of Rune. If you go to Rune, you will get Balkoth Tribesmen, Arlad Dragon Riders, and Daratai Warriors. So again, getting a, uh, what do you call it, Javelin unit that you don't normally have at this tier, a Cavalry unit, and the Dragon Riders are pretty solid Cavalry. And Daratai Warriors, you know, solid infantry here. Again, we'll go more in depth on these units once the time comes, but I'll just continue to discuss where they kind of fill a gap in your roster. And if you upgrade to the Barracks of True Sons, you do gain the Lok Gamp Rim, giving you a very solid kind of middle middle high tier pikeman unit. Not as good as the R Farazon's Faithful, but still quite nice. You do get the Golden Armor Legions from Rune there. Next, I will hover on over to Kerasant, where here, if we look at the Conscription Camp, you get Vineyard Levies, Thorn Crossbowmen, and Thorn Patrollers. The Thorn Patrollers fill a unique role in that they are the only mounted crossbow cavalry unit in the game that you can get as the R Ardenium, and I believe they are one of only two mounted crossbows, the other being the Misty Mountains uh, War Skirmishers or War Crossbows, so... A unique unit should you go to Dorwinian, and it is a very rich land if you do. And if you go into the second tier, the Barracks of True Sons. Interesting. Wait, did I pick up Mistrand? I could have sworn I was looking at Karasan. Okay, that was weird. Uh, Barracks, if we could look. Uh, Barracks of True Sons here, you get the Regent Bogard, giving you a very, very solid crossbow unit with a good shield. So, kind of a Pavis crossbow unit here. Um, a very, very great crossbow unit. Not Maybe not as good at range as the Baruthiel's Rangers we'll get into later, but still, it's just another crossbow to get. And the interesting thing, if you do decide to go into Darwinian or Rune, is that you this is the only way that you will be able to field both Runic and Darwinian units in the same army. Typically, natural enemies, and in rare, very rare cases, are the allied. But it's the only way you can get them to fight side by side with one another, so just something interesting there. Moving next up in a, guess you could say, counterclockwise position, we have the Men of Dale. Should you go to Dale, you will get Northman Archers, kind of a, again, weaker archer unit, nothing too special there. But you do also get Dale Cavalry, a solid, if probably overpriced cavalry unit, and the Dalian Longbowmen, which give you a better ranged archer, since they do have a 180 meter range. And I think their defensive stats are more or less around the same as the Rosanna Bowman, but better accuracy and that 180 meter range is pretty nice. Now, when you upgrade the Barracks of True Sons, you also get the Barding Marksman, giving you a very solid, high accuracy, decently armored archer unit. Do note the Barding Marksmen are not the archers with armor piercing that Dale has, but still, they are very respectable and it is... Honestly, Dale is also not a bad place to go to, considering you do have the river settlements to get your low culture requirement as Zaire. And, of course, it's always just nice to have rivers for money anyway. And you've got these four capitals here. If you do end up deciding that you wish to assault Dale, then you might as well take Erebor and Thranduil's Halls at the same time with your starting stack. And you could probably have a very profitable campaign. So do note, if you do that start... You will have to deal with basically three Doom stacks immediately as you take Erebor, the Woodland Realm out, and Dale at once. It could be very, very hard, but it could pay off really, really well if you manage to survive. 
Next off, we have the Bjornings. Now, going into the uh, conscription camp, you get Veilsmen, Woodman Hunters, who are actually quite solid. I like the Woodman Hunters. And Aotheod Horsemen, giving you your first skirmisher or javelin skirmisher cavalry unit should you go into the Anduin Veil. Vale. And upgrading the Barracks of True Sons, you unlock the Bjorning Defenders, giving you a pretty, pretty solid... Uh, spear and shield unit of which you don't really have is the art of nine. I guess that might be one potential weakness outside of the Rosadon spears is you don't particularly have a middle tier spear unit. You do have the Royal Guard and you do have the Pikes, of course, uh, but you don't necessarily have like a middle tier spearman unit. So these fill that kind of role for your roster should you decide to move into the Anduin. I'll continue to move counterclockwise here. We'll go up to Angmar in the north. Taking Angmar does give you a few units. You do get Thralls, Angmar Infantry, Hillmen, and Rudar Savages. Now, arguably, nothing here really fills any holes in your roster. The Rudar Savages, even them, I mean, you have Azrazair Warriors anyway, so you're not really gaining anything from an Angmar settlement. And if you decide to go for the Barracks of True Sons, you do at least... Get the Dark Blades, a very powerful ranger unit, but the rest of it's honestly kind of just Angmar and trash. Nothing too fancy that you can get there from Angmar. And in fact, this is the first settlement we've come across. We actually don't get cavalry, so you won't get any cavalry if you decide to go to Angmar and use their conscription camps. Next off, we have the Men of Bree. So going into Area Door here, should you decide to go anywhere, we will start off with Journeyman. Archer Militia, and Merchant Cavalry. So again, most of the time, except for Angmar, which we just discovered, you will be able to get some form of Cavalry unit. Here in Bree, you do get the Merchant Cavalry, who I've always thought fill a very interesting role, given the fact that they rely almost entirely on armor and shield, and they have zero defensive skills. So I've always thought they're an interesting Cavalry unit. Low morale, low morale response. We'll get into them more in detail when we go into the Bree video, but I mean, that's honestly the sum of it. Should you upgrade the Bree Conscription Camp, you will unlock the Watchman's Bow Guard. So not as special here in Bree, uh, given the unit options, just an okay archer. Better than your Rosadon Bowman, not as good as your Baruthiel's Rangers, but, you know, they are an extra option for you to enjoy. Next we'll go south here and into Tharbad, which actually does not get the Conscription Camp, but we go to... Does it, hold on, does it really not... Yeah, just not. Okay, I wanted to make sure I wasn't missing that. But if you go into Dunland and check the conscription camp here, you do get Keith A. Huntsman, Mordak Fisherman, Clan Axman, and Frecklinger Hill Riders to give you a mounted option. However, there is one thing with the uh, Wildmen is that there is no bonus to get the second tier. There is no additional unit. You merely just get rid of the income and instead trade that for upkeep. So the Wildmen units arguably not that useful. It does make it for a challenging campaign. You will want Frecklinger Hill Riders if you do decide to start around the Guathla River here and into Anandwyther Dunland. Do note it's the same exact units for all food as well. So Anandwyth and Dunland, they share the roster of units that they give to you. We're almost done with only a few nations left. First of all, going into Rohan. Building the conscription camp here will give you Peasant Scouts, Peasant Militia, and the Rohirrim, which are a great cavalry unit for their tier. Honestly, probably the best cavalry at this tier. I guess you would count this maybe tier 2 cavalry. 10 charge is very nice. Rohan does get a bonus to their cavalry. And 83 soldiers. That's more cavalry than most nations actually get per battalion. And should you upgrade it to the Barracks of True Sons, you do get the Aerid Skirmishers, giving you a higher tier javelin mounted unit. Now, we're nearly at the end here. We have Gondor and Dolomroth. So I'll do Gondor first, um, though the units are actually shared outside of the Dolomrothian ones, which are only available there. So in the lands of Gondor, you will get Territorial Guardsmen, Gondor Militia, Archer Militia, and Gondor Cavalry Militia. And there's your first preview of the Ardenium color scheme that they get. And should you upgrade that to the Barracks of True Sons, you additionally get Gondor Infantry, so a solid middle tier sword and shield unit. Not as good as your Royal Knights are, or what are they called? The, uh, 
Uh, the one that Gimbal Zor has, I'm blanking on their name right now, but uh, the, the Armsmen. Not as good as the Armsmen, but they do fill a role where they are better than the Rosadon units. And of course, they get that nice, nice Emeraldian color scheme. And should you take Dole Emroth and the Conscription Camp, uh, same initial units, Territorial Guardsmen, Gondor Militia, Archer Militia, the same stuff there. But when you upgrade it in to... Uh, in Dolan Roth, you do get two very nice units here. You still get the Gondor Infantry, but you also get the Ambrothian Squires in the red and black armor and the Seaward Spearmen. So you get very solid Spearmen and good Gondor Infantry along with a very powerful Ambrothian Squire unit. Just one more charge than the Rohirrim, but less men here, though higher armor there. The Squires are very nice. Honestly, taking Dolan Roth as your starting settlement makes for a fantastic campaign. You get a lot of options here for conscription, and you get a solid income. Pay no mind to the fact that it's only 211 per turn. I've got no governor here, and corruption is running rampant amongst my realm. So that does it for the conscription units. Now on to the Royal Guard, and I'm not going to go through every single settlement with these guys, but for the most part, any settlement that has a unique building, such as the Ruins of the Pillar, typically in capital settlements, will allow you to train Nauru and our Royal Knights. So I will just breeze through these really quickly for the ones that I know for certain. Umbar, Finabel, the Baradur, both the Black Gate and Minas Morgul will both give you the Royal Knights. You can also get them in Minas Tirith and Dol and Roth, both of these at the Tirith IR. And in Minas Tirith, it is the Tower of Ecthelion that allows you to recruit those. You'll also be able to get them here in Edoras at the uh, at the Great Hall Medu uh, Meduseld. In Isengard, you get them from the Orthanc. You also get them at Byrig, though do note you do not get them in Alkbu. The Clan Moot does not provide them, but the High Brennan's Roost does. And again, like I said earlier, the double kind of posting here has already been fixed. I'm just on an older version of version 5 right now. You can also get them at Tharbad. Should you rebuild the Bridge of Tharbad, you will unlock the Royal Knights. Additionally, though they are not available in Dwarven Settlements or Goblin Settlements, like you won't get them in Khazad of Doom, you won't get them in Goblin Town, and you won't get them in all of the, um, in none of the Elven Settlements, I should say, except for Imladris, for whatever reason that may be, you do get the Royal Guard and the Royal Knights here at the last Homely House. And in fact, now I'm just realizing it's not a double, <laughs> it's not a double posting, it's two different units here, Knights and Guards. So both of those very unique units only at certain capital settlements. They're not in Goblin Town, they are not in Mount Gundabad, they are not in Thranduil's Halls. Uh, they can be found at Dale, but not Erebor um, or Esgaroth. Um, additionally, they are in Karis South and they are in Mistrand. I'm kind of going all over the place, I apologize for that. You do get them from the Prancing Pony in Bree. You'll also get them, I believe, from the Green Dragon Inn in Breland Village. I could be, that could be mistaken. They might not be in Hobbiton. They should be available at the Mayor's Office in Mitchell Delving, according to the EDB. They are not available in Enuminas unless you rebuild the House of Kings, which is a very pow powerful building. Gives you the same effects as the Dunedain, so... Though you can't actually conscript Dunedain units, it can be worthwhile to start an Enuminas to go for this building. It'll help you a lot with your public order issues that you have going on as the Ardenaim. So, great place to go. Uh, but you do not get them in Mythlond, nor do you get them in Thorns Halls, but you do get them in Karn Doom. So, generally, the simplest deduction to make for that is any custom, any custom settlement that is typically at like a settlement of major importance... Outside of Dwarven Settlements, all the Dwarven Settlements, and all of the Elven ones except for Imladris. Um, it is also available in Dol Guldur, so the Mordor Settlements do contain them. But know that they are not available at the Karak. So, another simple way to think about it might be just to say, pretty much anything north of the Karak on the map, be it, or along this line basically, anything in the north of the map that isn't Dale, basically, or Imladris, you will not get the Royal Knights and the Royal Guard from. That pretty much does it for the conscription units and where you can get the Royal Guard and the Royal Knights. I will now migrate back over to the battle map. And now we have returned to the battle map where I've also included the units and their armor upgrades so that you can see which ones actually have upgraded visuals. 
Do note that not all of them do, but I will be showing them all side by side. But first of all, the one unit that I mistakenly forgot in the first part, the Baruthiel's Watch, your predominant, premier, and most powerful crossbow unit that you get access to as the Ardenium. They are an 8 melee attack, 12 missile with 13 offense, but they can hide anywhere and being crossbows they are effective against uh, excuse me, effective against armor. They come with 26 missiles and 180 meter range that is very very high when it comes to their accuracy. So these guys are absolute snipers. Not as good as say the broad beam marksmen, but they definitely contend to be up there with the top crossbows in the game. 102 men per battalion. Do note their armor is somewhat lower, so their defense against other missiles is not that great, but they more than make up for it with their pinpoint accuracy and relatively high range. Keep them away from enemy cavalry and keep them out of range of other archers, and they will do just fine. So, now moving on to the Gondor units. I put the Gondor Militia. They don't have a visual armor upgrade on either tier, but they do come with the black and red armor that the Ardenium are famous for and you can see the bannermen are carrying it here in the Gondorian plate mail. Those are the Gondor militia. Going on to the territorial guardsmen, these units do have a visual upgrade so starting off they only have kind of their leather tabards and the shields here but when you get armor upgrades on them they do a top chain mail that they start to wear underneath their leather. So they get a visual upgrade, which is always nice to see, and one of my favorites, um, probably my favorite aspect of Medieval 2 is just the fact that your same units will visually look better as you upgrade their gear. I've, I've always loved that, and I wish that system would return. Going on to the Archer Militia, they do not get a visual change when they upgrade their armor. They just kind of keep the chainmail with the Ardenium gear. But again, the gray or dark black and red coloring, it looks very nice. Um... Now, obviously, they do stand stand out quite a bit if you put them next to the uh, Berthiel Swatch. Their armor is not of the same quality, but they, you know, it, it's still nice that you get this. I personally like to see all of the units adopt this style at some point for the Ardenine, but that is a monumental task. Behind them, we have the Gondor Infantry wearing their simple tabards with the Ardenine logo on top of it and on the shields. And then with the armor upgrades, they do equip the full plate armor that Gondor is, you know, so renowned for. And then they simply just have a, you know, red pants and a black and red shield there. But it's the same armor that Gondor uh, um, would be using anyway, so I love that look. Behind them, we do have the Gondor Cavalry Militia, which, if I'm mistaken, do they have an upgrade? These guys have chainmail. Uh, these guys also have chainmail, so they don't have a visual upgrade either. But they adopt the same style with the red shields. Going to the two dual Emerothian units, so the Seaward Spearmen. They do not get a visual upgrade either, but they do look really cool regardless with the steel armor. The swan symbol remains on their armor, yet they now wear the shields of the Ardenium. And then behind them, we have the Amrothian Squires. Same kind of deal. These guys actually, you know, they don't get the... Visual upgrades. I thought they might have for a second. It kind of looks like these guys are more plain on their tabards than than these guys. No, I'm just mistaken. But again, the red and black, they fit very well with your roster. And there was actually one unit that I missed on the conscription that I noticed while looking at the character roster. And that is the Lebanon Guardsmen. So you'll get these guys around like Pilar Gear and the Lebanon Regions. I forget the other one's names off the top of my head. But you do get these guys should you take Pilar Gear which is a decent start also, though a very difficult one. And they do come with a armor upgrade equipping, kind of a heavier chainmail set here with the leather pauldrons above their shoulders. Uh, so, but yeah, that is basically it for the um, additional conscription units. Uh, as far as I'm aware, none of the other conscription units actually take on the color schemes. I could be wrong about that, but I'm like 90% I'm like certain that they don't. If anyone else does, just let me know in the uh, comments below. But that will conclude the second part of the Ardenium overview video. Again, I'm sorry, I should have just done this in the first part and I didn't really think about it. So it's it's the most unique part of the Ardenium roster and what makes their campaign so special is the fact that they can recruit all these units through their conscription mechanics. So I should have included it there. There's no excuse for it this time. But I hope you guys did enjoy the video and I will see you guys again in just a few more days as we take um as we take on what was who was next actually
Was it Brie? It was Brie. Yeah, Brie will be next at this Saturday, so I hope you guys are looking forward to that video. And until then, my friends, farewell.